On the second night of a back-to-back, the Raptors fall short against the Atlanta Hawks. Chris Boucher with a career high in points, but the Hawks had an answer every time. The three-game winning streak is now over. 132-121 is the final. The Raptors record now 10-13 and on the season. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Jack Armstrong, Sherman Hamilton, and Paul Jones. Guys, I want to start with this, Jack, and I'll start with you. Why do you think that, that the Hawks were able to keep the Raptors at bay for the entire time once they got the lead? Uh, because of the fact that, uh, you know, I pointed this out tonight. Uh, the, the Hawks are in the top 10 at, at preventing uh, fast break points and points off of turnovers. Their transition defense is really good. Uh, most times tonight, uh, they didn't send anyone to the offensive glass. Uh, their entire point of emphasis tonight was to limit the Raptor transition. And the Raptors had nine break points tonight. Would they have 26, 28 last night against the Nets? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if I'm coaching against Toronto, I mean, that's my single biggest point of emphasis with my team is you absolutely have to keep these guys in a half court game. And I thought Atlanta did a really good job of that, Randy. Sure, 38-29 Hawks in that second quarter. It looked like to me that the Raptors were kind of fatiguing there. Did you see that or, or was that something I was just seeing? No, I mean, obviously they playing the second game of back-to-back. There could be fatigue issues. Uh, but, I mean, this is something we've seen in terms of the Raptors being unable to close quarters well. And going into the half, I don't think they did a very good job in terms of really just locking in to what they had done to that point. And, and Atlanta took advantage of that. And, and at the end of the day, you're on another team's home floor. You can't give them advantages, especially going into the locker room. And then coming out the locker room, the first few minutes of that third quarter, the Raptors yeah. struggle. Nick Nurse calls a timeout. They straighten themselves out. Lloyd Pierce calls a timeout. Atlanta straightens themselves out. And all of a sudden now it gets back to that balance. So, I mean, fatigue was probably a part of what uh, was uh, hurting the Raptors in this game. I don't think they'll use it as an excuse, but I do think I saw some fatigue out there. Jonesy, for the fans that, that are watching at home, just explain a little bit that, uh, like how hard back-to-backs really are, because I know it's, it's a word that we, or a phrase that we throw around, but, you know, we don't really talk about, you know, the severity of, of, the, of what they could cause. Well, for, for the most part, and, and just to kind of tag what, what Sherman Jack said, uh, to Jack's point about the transition defense, coaches usually can handle one point per turnover. Atlanta turned the ball over 19 times tonight and only gave up 16 points off those turnovers. So they were like, okay, we, we might turn it over. And that, to me, that's the Nate McMillan old school stamp all over it and, and, and that influence on the coaching staff. And to Sherm's point, that is a classic back-to-back. You come out swinging and punching. You know, they're up uh, at the end of the first quarter. Atlanta's below 50%. And then for the rest of the night, Atlanta's offensive field goal percentage just continued to rise. And, and to me, that was the key, that the Raptors, uh, they used the right formula to win a road game. Stay close, stay close, and then make a push at the end and lean them out. But they couldn't make that consistent push because mm-hmm. they couldn't get stops. And, and, and I think that is part of the back-to-back. As Sherm said, it won't be used as an excuse because the Raptors have actually been very, been very good over the last seven, eight years on the second nights of back-to-back. They haven't used it as an excuse. But tonight, they weren't able to get stops. Atlanta got to the free throw line. Trey Young had 14 free throws himself. So those are the things that your defense can't stop free throws. And when you're fouling and giving the other team those attempts, it makes it difficult. Go ahead, Jack. Just one, I want to make one point. A, a night like tonight shows how much you miss Serge Ibaka. Uh, they really didn't get anything out of Baines tonight. And though Boucher was phenomenal off the bench, uh, when you play in the half-court game five-on-five five against a team that set defense, to have that next polished professional player that can get you buckets, right? And, and the Raptors had the second-best record in the NBA last year. And a big part of it, people kind of sleep on it a little bit. The impact that Serge Ibaka made on a lot of those nights, uh, you really miss that. Uh, That other pick and roll partner for Van Vliet and Lowry, who was scuffling tonight, uh, to have to play through, you really miss them tonight. I'll even tag that and say, 
as much as they might have missed a guy like Serge on the offensive end, they missed him defensively yeah. as well. And yeah. listen, Chris Boucher, bless his heart. He plays hard. He blocks shots. He alters shots. But he doesn't have the presence, the girth, the strength, the, the maturity of a Serge Ibaka, and even a Marcus Gasol defensively, who when those guys came into the paint, they delivered blows instead of accepting blows. Chris Boucher is at a point where he's still accepting blows. He might block the shot, but he can easily be taken out of the play because physical players will go through him. That wasn't happening with Serge. That wasn't happening with Marc Gasol. And to your point, Jack, when you're playing the half-court game and they're trying to get that ball at the rim because the Raptors did a good job in terms of balling Trey Young up and making him make plays for other people, but those passes over the top, the ability to attack by John Collins, you know, those guys getting into the paint, the bodies of Serge and, and the minds of Serge and Mark would have been, I think, different in terms of protecting that paint. And that's just it, Randy. When the defense gets broken down and people get into the paint, the Raptors had different kind of rim protection. Mark Gasol would be taking charges. We see some of that with Aaron Baines, but Serge would be doing the vertical protection around the rim, and people are looking for that, and they're kicking it out, or those shots are just a little bit different. So, again, it goes back to what I first started it's with, the defense and, and Atlanta's D, Atlanta's offense was never really put off kilter after the middle of the second quarter. They just felt like they could get whatever they want. And to your initial statement that opened the show, Herbs, that's why Toronto was always held at bay. Atlanta just was able to get what they want on the offensive end. Well, well let's let's go more into that, uh, Jack, with, with Trey Young. You know, actually, it felt like the Raptors were doing a pretty good job early on against him. And then he... You know, he does what he does. He gets to the line. He is so confident this season, it seems like. Uh, what did you see tonight? Well, you know, in defense of Trey Young, and, and, you know, a lot of people got on him last year. He was uh, empty calories, a guy getting, getting a lot of numbers on a bad team, and he gets in the All-Star, right? Um, I think the fact that he's got better people around him, and they're missing guys right now. When they have a team at full strength, I mean, he had 13 assists and 14 free throws. Mm -hmm. I mean, forget about all the other stuff. You know, we were chatting about this last night about James Harden. You know, I, I, I like what I'm seeing from Harden in terms of his sacrifice. You know, sometimes scorers get a bad rap. Sometimes they need to score for their team to win. Uh, but I, I, I like Trey Young's game. Yeah, he's a little slight, but that's not his fault. He's got a great handle. He's crafty. He's got the great little runners. He can shoot it from anywhere. He's got crazy, crazy, uh, you know, distance on his shot like a Lillard or a Curry. And uh, I think you put better people around him. He calms down and plays. And I, I think his heart is in the right place. I think he's a baller. And I think he'll do the things, particularly as they grow and get better, he'll do things to help you win. Well, well Trey Young doesn't, I mean, this is a position where he can be slight. And he'll get that, that experience strength to his game as the years go on. But there's no question he can be slight, but he's creative. And he has a template. He's seen Steph Curry. And Steph Curry came out to the NBA. He was slight as well. And a guy who figured out a way with a deadly shot, improved his handle. And to Jack's point, when they started, when Clay Thompson was developing and Draymond Green's added to the mix, and, and now they have some bodies, Andrew Bogut's in the mix. And all of a sudden now these players are around this individual great talent. They just explode. And I think that's what Atlanta's doing. And to credit the Raptors, I mean, they're doing a good job executing their game plan. Last night, we saw it against James Harden. They kick, get the ball out of his hands, make other people yeah. score. Same thing they did tonight with Trey Young. The problem is other people were scoring tonight. I mean, they were <laughs> knocking down threes. They made 19 threes. It's one of those, what does it say, those 20 games, 10 games, whatever you do, you're not going to win. Yeah. Other yeah. 10 yeah. games, you're going to win regardless of what you do. It's about the middle uh, 62. This was one of those games for the Raptors. You know, we talked a little bit about Boucher's sort of deficiencies. He's not going to body guys up down low, and he's not going to be that imposing you know, presence um, at the rim at times, although he can, you know, alter shots and things like that. But Jonesy, you know, for all those, you know, for his slight figure, he's really he turning terrific. into a nice player, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no question, Randy. And I, I, just, I just love his energy tonight. Uh, he did damage on the offensive glass. Uh, he was following shots. Uh, the Raptors have this thing, and Sherman and I and Jack, uh, you know, they're my two radio partners. We've talked about it on the radio. When the Raptors get a guy driving, it seems like there's a cutter coming to the ball to either 
take receive a pass or or be there for the offensive glass before somebody retreats. Chris Boucher was doing that all night. He did a great job finishing on the offensive glass, giving them second chance opportunities, keeping the ball alive. And and look, let's face it, when Nick Nurse looked down the bench tonight, it was like, who do I want? Who who suits this type of game more? Chris Boucher or Aaron Baines and what I'm getting from them? Boucher was in the mix. And and, and I again I love what he does defensively. I, I, I really do. He closes out with length and speed on the perimeter. He's in the lane contesting shots. He's in there rebounding, mixing it up. So uh, you, you can't fault anything the young man does. And again, a career high tonight. It's too bad that the Raptors have to talk about it in a loss. Real quick, Jack, it's going to be a grinded out game Monday night against Memphis. What do, you, what do, you need, what do the Raptors need to do to get through them? Uh, they need to rest tomorrow. <laughs> they looked like a tired team late tonight. I mean, their effort was so great last night. And uh, they played in fits and starts last night, kind of ran out of gas a little bit. So, uh, I, you know, I think they'll be ready to play Monday night. I, I just, you know, Lowry and Van Vliet, those guys play so hard. They expend so much energy. You could see it in their offense tonight. They were combined 4 of 14 from 3 yeah. and a combined 10 of 34 from the field. I mean, you need better from them, but they're giving you everything they got. So I think more than anything else, you get some rest, you get some fresh legs. Uh, they'll be ready to go Monday night against Memphis. Sure. Was the flow okay tonight or, uh, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think you kind of wore it out. It was a surprise last night. And then tonight it's just like, oh, there's Irv's trying to be cool again. Uh, you know what he's saying, Irv's? You're looking a little stale with it. You're looking a little – it needs <laughs> – Needs, you you, you got to bring it every game, man. Yeah, you can't, yeah, you, you yeah. can't be slacking like that. Yeah, you got to go and powder your nose, man. Go fix it up in the bathroom or something, man. <laughs> Thanks for doing this, guys. See you next game. <laughs> hey, we love you, Randy. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. You can click to watch our last episode or to subscribe to the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode.